Well, all right, round three. I hope you guys have been enjoying the build so far. Maybe you're building along with me, or maybe you're just watching for fun. But today, I get to focus on the floorboard right here. This is only a part of the chassis. Of course, the frame rails are still over here in the package, looking so great. Every time I do the build video, I make sure everything is nicely laid out so it's nice and orderly. This is orderly for me. <laughs> Parts trees laid out. And of course, I gave this a light spray of uh, light gun metal. Now, I did this to kind of help accent the aftermarket option parts I'm going to put on this, as well as to help the interior look a little bit more finished. I got to get these particular parts. So this is why I had spray painted this tree already. So it's going to be the emergency brake lever, the shifter, uh, the center console we can see is going to get installed here. All right, let's do it. Now, if you're just joining us, this has been an exceptional build already. Uh, lots of detail, lots of uh, scale realism. In the last video, we saw actual roll-up windows, as well as working windshield wipers, as well as working door latches, or at least one on the rear door. And even though I did pre-paint these, I'm gonna go in with a small razor blade, just the corner, and trim away that extra plastic. Can't even see it on the painted piece, and if it was noticeable, I could get in there and easily touch it up. But I always like to have all those little burrs off of, you know, all the plastic pieces, just so I don't get a scratch later on. And it just looks and fits so much nicer, you know? Okay, so here's that center area. I expect it to be a little bit more of a tighter fit because I did paint it already, so it sits there perfectly. And I'll bust out the magnetic tray, get a couple of these screws out of bag S. <laughs> That's what I love about magnet trays. Sometimes I think I spent more time making small models out of magnetic screws than I did actually building the, the RC itself. Okay, and then comes the linkage on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and use that same screw. Then the center prindle. <laughs> prindle. Okay. Over. And this goes through, and it goes into two tabs that are right on the front. You can see I'll open this up and get that light a little better for you. And it slides right into the tab like that. Then you push this down, and underneath, back up the camera, underneath there is a screw right down here from your D-bag. Insert D-bag joke now. <laughs> I just got screwed by the D-bag. Okay, so down from that, of course, are these two holes right here. They're a little bit small for these two posts. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand drill it with this small bit. That way I can ensure that there's accuracy and, and it's just a small amount of material that I'm removing. Could be a little bit bigger, but there. Pops into place, no problem. See, it's the added paint I added on here, of course, makes it thicker for that shifter. Turn it around a little bit. You can see the post spots for the handbrake. Hopefully I don't break the handbrake. There, it popped in. Beautiful, everything is in there nice and snug now. And just a small bit of model glue on the end here. Getting that shifter down into its final resting spot. And what you're seeing me use is actually shoe goo, which is a rubberized glue. That way I don't have any CA foam, uh, fumes or any kind of issues like that reacting with the paint. And then enter the ultra high torque mini servo. Well, micro servo, I guess I should say. This is 4.3 kilograms. On the back here, you can also see 13 grams, an analog servo. It's got a bit of a fingerprint on there because I just had it opened and sprayed it with conformal coating to help waterproof this or make it more water resistant. I can never make the motor inside resistant to rusting if it sees water, uh, but at least I've protected the microchip. Now where this goes is right in front of these two post holes right there. Here is the bracket, and I'm using bag E, bag E. So like that, and then just two screws right into the post holes. 
So there you go. Now you're looking at the complete setup. I got the horn on there, but I'm not going to cinch up this linkage yet until uh, I plug everything in and I can get this servo into the neutral range. But in theory, what's going to happen is as that moves back and forth, got a little bit of paint on there. I should have taken that paint off the roller, but it's really not that bad. That servo is going to be plenty uh, strong to move that shifter back and forth. Cool, huh? So once that's hooked up and everything's done, go over to the garbage where you threw out that piece of clear plastic that you thought was garbage from the kit, and then get out the nifty RC Sparks decal sheet, and you'll notice right above, ta-da, nav system, little clock radio, as well as some vents, and of course the capo uh, radio, as well as the heating system. Peel this decal off. Take the uh, outside layering of this plastic and peel that off as well. Stick the decals right to the plastic. But first, what I'm going to do is spray some Windex on here, just so I can help, either Windex or hairspray, which will help keep the air bubbles out from underneath the uh, decal. Then when it dries, everything is perfect. I'm going to take that, peel that decal off of the sheet, and stick it right to this plastic piece. I'm a little off, that's okay. I'm just gonna squeeze all that Windex out. I could use a credit card to do this if I wanted, but you'll see that there's absolutely zero bubbles uh, in that decal sheet now. No rippling at all. And then you wanna cut out every piece from the plastic. And ba bam look at this, pre-painted. Yes, I did get the Eastern version. I have pre-painted this mold, which is all uh, coinciding with the light gun metal that I did with the center console and the extra accent pieces. And what you're gonna see here are individual slots for these pieces to fit into. So for example, the clock is gonna be going on the inside like this. This is where you're trimming them and using an adhesive to get those to stay in place. Okay, these are all in place. I'll flip it over. You can see, look at that. The console looks fantastic. Now, there is a light kit that comes in the US version. I'm gonna leave a website in the video description box down below. If you're looking to get one of these or other Capital products, uh, it's from my good friend Kai. Uh, Kai is a great supplier out of Hong Kong, of course. Uh, does great work with Capo as well. Let's have a look at the light kit. A little side job here. Wow, that is a lot to work with. So this is the Capo light controller. I have one of these in my JK Max. That's why you never really see my JK Max in deep water and stuff because there is a lot of expensive and uh, like very precise electronics on the inside, even though you have seen me splash it around in the water. <laughs> now for ease of use, I'm gonna take this part out. This is where I unplug this gently. This is the only piece I need for the dash at the moment. This is going to be for the center console, and this one is going to be behind the cluster. Okay, so the rectangle light plate gets put onto the back of the dash, and then you got this bracket. This bracket is actually almost life-size to the computer. With a couple of D-bag screws, you too can get your light kit installed properly. So Capel actually gives you three different choices of color and style of instrument cluster. Look at that. So if you want an orange interior with all the different lights down below, if you want red or if you want clear, you can choose it. All you have to do is cut it out and then peel back the protective layer. Yeah, three different chances to screw up your cutting. <laughs> ah, that one's pretty good actually, I think I nailed it. Okay, then once I have that adhesive in place, a little bit more shugu for me there is going to keep it done. You'll see this three LED cluster fits onto these two posts. Once that's screwed in place, you can move on. Then a small plastic piece off the tree. Another screw with bag D. 
And then enter in another micro servo with another fingerprint from the conformal coating and my waterproofing. I have a feeling somebody will be stealing this rig from me and setting me up for a crime of some sort. What's interesting about the servo though is you need to attach on the servo horn, you'll see here, two small screws and this steering shaft. <laughs> Then trim everything. But remember, you want to make sure to have your servo in the neutral position before you power everything up because I could take these two screws off right now and screw this to the top of the horn, but there's really no point until I get there and know where everything is. That, and it, I don't really think it's going to be a big deal. So you can see I've trimmed all the way around and I'm going to mount up the servo. Now you can see that little piece I put on the side there is actually a mount for the screw. Got it flipped over, installed one shifter. I'm going to put the other one in just by sliding it in. That dash is really looking good now, hey? Just like that. And of course the finishing piece, the capo steering wheel. Beautiful. Now on these big old parts trees, that we covered this in the last video, there are two of them that are identical. I ended up getting both of these long pieces off of here and these are very thick pieces. So you wanna make sure that if you're threading along with me, make sure to tap these very slowly to avoid damaging them. You don't want these to kinda of twist or break out. I haven't seen any of them do it yet, but they do have a warning in the video. What am I talking about? You can see on the dash, they get installed on either side. And these screws that go into these forks, it's almost like they needed a separate set of washers in between the plastic forks and the screw, if I can see it there, because it, it wants to spread them apart. But they have these floor plates that you install that just clicks into the side on either side, and then you use this cross brace to screw two through to make it into one solid unit. And there you have the complete dash assembly. I can take this piece, turn it around, drop it right into these holes. Let me show you here if I can get you in close enough. Yeah, right there, drop it right into the hole on either side. Getting the wires out of the way and done. Then what I want to do is drop four screws. One, two, three, four. And there is a cool little saying on here. Look at this. Upon the rock, I will build my world. <laughs> Capo racing. Two screws for the posts, so one here and of course one right down at the bottom. Now that's all installed. Look at this. Ta da! You must be thinking this video is incredibly slow because we haven't really got a lot done today. But I gotta tell you, the amount of detail on this is making it worth it for me. I'm loving this build. So here is the final piece of today's build video a seat. Look how huge it is, how it just sits in my hand. That is no 10th scale seat, my friends. Now, why would I even be bothering speaking about a seat? How, how boring. We've all seen plastic seats before. They go up and down. That's nothing new. In fact, this might be something new. How about an adjustable headrest? That's kind of cool. But it's not worth mentioning, is it? Even though this has to be assembled and two of them have to be done, you just make them adjustable right there with that screw. But then what's this piece underneath? What is that? In a real car, this would be a seat adjuster. You're kidding me. Look at this right here. Adjustment places for your seat. Also screw areas for washers and screws. Let me install it and show you. Here I am underneath. I flipped it upside down and installed eight screws and washers, rolling it back over. Look at this. Now the interior is completed. Wow.
Let me move around this seat so I can show you. I'll get you down low, right there. So you take up and you can slide the seat forward. Then you can slide it back as far as you want, but lift it up to slide it forward. So whatever figure you have in there, now it's completely adjustable. Ba-boom, Capo does it again, my friends. What do you think? What a crazy build, hey? A lot of you I read in the last uh, comment sections, you're like, I am way too intimidated. This is way too detailed for me to build, but I love watching you build it. And I don't want you guys to be intimidated. In fact, you guys even have a helpful RC Sparks video to follow along with now. So if I can do this, guys, don't worry, you can too. It's definitely bang for your buck. I'm loving this build so much. Have you guys made it to the end of the video? Comment down below. Let me know if you're watching right now. Smash that like button for all these different scale features that you're seeing on the six or one from Capo Racing. And let me know, do you watch the whole build video or do you skip to the end just to see the product? or some derivative of that. Let me know guys, we'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. Now get outside and enjoy the hobby of RC. It is freaking awesome.